Hello, I'm David Ades. I offer life coaching at a reasonable rate, and today I'm talking about enlightened self-destruction, aka self-improvement. Of course, in order for things to be capable of improvement, they must be lesser, weaker, uglier, less formed, darker, dirtier, things of this nature. And we're not going to improve ourselves and our lives, our relationships, by just tacking on lots of new things, right? You can try. You can try to just put lots of stuff on top of what you already are and what you already have, but the reason that isn't going to necessarily, at least, lead to long-term improvement is because the things that have been keeping you from the improvements that you seek are, are under your skin. They are a part of you. So the only way that putting new things in your life could potentially uh, lead to lasting improvements is if the new things replace old things. And this is quite the dirty part about self-improvement. We are not just venturing out into light and growth and, and peace and positivity and love. We are venturing also into the pits of the lack of love and the lack of light and the lack of connection and the lack of support and the lack of openness and the lack of warmth. Why aren't things already at the level that you seek to improve them to? It's because there is some darkness, some coldness, some emptiness, some lack of form. So we have to destroy these things. Limiting beliefs need to be destroyed. The part of yourself that uh, every time there is something good for you to do, which is sometimes hard to to decide, like, should I do this or should I have done that? It's, it's up for debate. You won't know unless you go through with it, or if you don't, then you come at peace with how you didn't. So a lot of it is up for debate, and this is all uh, around like a sense of security in yourself. If you feel like you have to run around and you're always second-guessing yourself, there's a kind of inner home that you are going to need to work on, so that if you're at home and yourself, then you don't feel the need to frantically run about and think, what should I do, what shouldn't I do, what should I do, what shouldn't I do? But every time there's something, let's say, obviously good for you that you might do, the part of you that hesitates and says, no, I'm too tired, and no, it's not worth it, and what's the point, and it's not going to work anyway, and it's too frustrating, and, and things of this nature, this part of you needs to be dismantled. This part of you needs to be deconstructed. This part of you needs to be lit on fire so it can burn away and leave you alone. Because again, these parts of you, the darker parts, the lesser formed parts, the uglier parts, the childish parts, the darker parts, the dirtier parts, the really the uglier parts, like the morally ugly, spiritually ugly, uh, so on and so forth, socially ugly, emotionally ugly, like childish uh, resentment or things like this, these need to be burned away. But in order for them to be burned, of course, we have to open kind of the casket of the parts of, our, of ourselves that are either dead or keeping us dead or keeping us less than uh, more alive. We need to open up the casket and experience the burning of these things. These things metaphorically need to see the light and hopefully the light pierces through that requires us opening up and connecting with others. We need to connect with the light in other people and in different environments and relationships and contexts. We need to search for the light and we have to open ourselves up to it. So the uglier, darker, dirtier, limited, evil parts of ourselves that prevent us from living more so they can be destroyed. So a really good way of putting this is self-improvement is an attempt to make conscious the type of self-sabotaging elements within ourselves, which are by nature hostile. Self-sabotage is some sort of unconscious hostility, whether it's taking the form of anxiety or emptiness or anger, resentment, bitterness, futility, hopelessness, depression. Some, some havoc is being wreaked uh, upon us internally, unconsciously. The goal then is to make the kind of hostility that's destroying us from the inside, to make it conscious so that then we can consciously turn it against the part of ourselves that have resulted in us not being where we would already like to be. I need to get angry at myself 
for my own limitations. I need to turn this dagger that, that I'm unconsciously piercing myself with through I'm too tired or I'm too anxious or it's not worth it or what's the point or I don't care. This type of unconscious dagger I'm poking myself with, I need to pull it out and you say, you know what I don't care about? I don't care about the part of me that doesn't care. I don't care about the part of me that's angry. I don't care about the part of me. Of course, we can completely flip the language and say, but we need to care for the parts of ourselves that are angry. And we need to care about the parts of ourselves that are dark because the inner child, right? This is a metaphor that's used very widely and to, to good effect. But there's always kind of a double-edged sword. There's two sides to the same coin. Like, do you get angry at yourself for continuously sabotaging yourself? Or do you open up to the part of you that's sabotaging yourself and give it the care that it needs to prevent you from continuing this pattern? And it depends on who you are and where you are and what energy, what emotional energy or mental energy or even physical bodily experience is associated with this part of yourself. There's a time for both of these. And this is a testament to having a dynamic personality. Just like if dealing with another person, sometimes you might have to be somewhat aggressive in order to get them to understand or to get them to hear what you're saying. Also, at other times, you might have to be softer and warmer and get down to their level and, and things of this nature. So this is kind of the I don't want to say dualism because it's more than two pieces, but in this context, in this video, I'm just open up, opening up the idea that self-improvement is actually enlightened self-destruction. Even if you go about it by opening yourself up and caring for the part of you that hasn't been cared for before, the reason you're doing that is to release it. Get away from me, please. You're sabotaging my ability to, to live. So... Let's not uh, go to extremes on either side. It's not uh, a kind of fixation on self-love that's going to heal all of your wounds and release all of the demons. Neither is it a kind of obsessive, like, I need to destroy the weak parts of me. You can see extremes of both of these in, in people kind of across the board, in uh, the New Age community or in maybe the life coaching community or across many communities you can see. Both. Of course, we're looking for some sort of middle ground that at the same time takes into account both options. Like I don't need to do it the way that I am accustomed to. I can do it the other way too, but I don't need it to do that way either. I'm going to decide which way I'm going to do it based on the context that I belong to. And that's a kind of psychological liberation that we're all uh, looking for. If you resonate with this message, you can schedule a free 45-minute session with me by clicking the first link in the description. Reach out to me through Instagram, at Coach David Ades, or through my email, david at dyingtolive.blog. Like this video if you do like it. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon.